I always know when a new claim is doing the rounds of the blogosphere because comments start appearing on my channel from people who unquestioningly believe them. So I began to suspect something was up when a couple of people claimed the Greenland ice sheet was growing. A quick search on Google, and yes, here they are. Greenland ice mass balance increasing, says a blog called Ice Age Now. New study shows global warming non-existent for nearly two decades, says the Constitution. A new study could prove to be the globalist's worst nightmare, says the blog What Did You Say? I thought the worst nightmare was a banana. Behold the atheist's nightmare. <coughs> and this is the study in question. <coughs> or at least a summary of it by the Danish Meteorological Institute on its website. Now it's unlikely all these bloggers read the DMI website and made exactly the same mistake, so as always we have to track back to find out where the original infestation, I mean error, started. So let's start with this blog, The Constitution, which says it's defending the Union from threats foreign and domestic, which is nice. It says, The culmination of decades of exhausting, unbiased work in the field of global climate science has now gifted us with one of the clearest pictures of our planet's true environmental situation, and the globalists are not going to be happy. It then quotes the Daily Wire, quoting the Daily Telegraph, which, it turns out, is quoting another blog called Not A Lot Of People Know That. And Not A Lot Of People Know That claims to have got its information from a computer model by the Danish Meteorological Institute, the DMI. <coughs> but the bloggers are all so busy copying and quoting from one another that nobody seems to have thought to check the information from the DMI to see if it's been accurately reported. So a warning to those who believe the bloggers, switch off now unless you want to see the actual report to find out what it really says. Let's start with the Telegraph article that most bloggers were copying from by Christopher Booker. He makes six claims altogether in the space of just three paragraphs. So let's see how many can be battered out of the ballpark. We'll start with the first one. Booker writes... Last week we were brought back to Earth by the Danish Meteorological Institute, DMI, as charted by our friend Paul Homewood on his blog Not A Lot Of People Know That, with the news that ever since December temperatures in the Arctic have consistently been lower than minus 20. I don't know if that's surprisingly cold for the Arctic in winter, and Booker doesn't say. So let's go to his source, Paul Homewood. What Homewood actually says is that temperatures have been minus 20 degrees C or more all year so far. That's from January 1st up till May 2nd, 2017, and that temperatures are currently below average. And Homewood reproduces a graph from the DMI website to confirm this. And sure enough, he's right. Around the beginning of May, the temperatures, which is the red line, were below average. That's the green line. I'm sorry the graph is a bit fuzzy, but I've had to zoom in to capture the two or three days of the year when the temperatures were below average. If we zoom out and look at the whole graph, we can see that for the rest of the year, temperatures were well above average. This is what's known as cherry picking, and it's the first ball to be batted out of the ballpark. And a high fly ball. Let's move on to the next claim by Christopher Booker. He writes, in April, the extent of Arctic sea ice was back to where it was in April 13 years ago. Again, quoting Paul Homewood. And again, that's not quite what Paul Homewood wrote. What he actually said was that average April ice extent has now been stable since 2004. Has it? Well, just below that claim, he shows a graph that seems to confirm it. But why April and why 2004? Well, because a lot of ice was lost in 2004, so it's a good year for his starting point. And if Homewood had chosen June or July or August or September or October or November or December of that year, then sea ice extent would have been much bigger in 2004, and that's not what he wants us to hear. So he was very particular about which month and which year to cherry pick. But even choosing April 2004 doesn't disguise the downward trend line, as the graph from the DMI clearly shows. And if we take a look at annual Arctic sea ice extent, the decline over the last 35 years is obvious even to those who prefer to cherry-pick their months. Bumgarner hits one high. Claim number three. Whereas in 2008 most of the ice was extremely thin, this year most has been at least two metres thick. 
Homeward tries to support this claim with two maps from the DMI model, showing ice thickness for May 2008 and May 2017. The reds represent thicker ice, the blues and purples thinner. Now it certainly looks to me like there's more blue and purple in the 2017 map and more red in the 2008 map, but that's purely subjective. To Homewood it apparently looks like the opposite, and that's also in the eye of the beholder. So let's dispense with the art class and look at the science, which has to do with measuring and numbers and calculations. We need to know exactly how much area is covered by ice that's 5 metres thick, how much covered by ice that's 3 metres thick, and so on, according to the DMI model. And that, of course, gives us volume, and comparing volume year by year tells us how much of the ice has melted. Fortunately, not only has the DMI worked out the volume in their model, they've reproduced their results in the insets. I don't know if Homewood realise what they were, but they directly contradict what he's just written. Ice volume is much lower in 2017, the black line here, than 2008, the black line here. Now, it may be that in some parts of the Arctic, ice is thicker in 2017 than 2008, and vice versa, but what the DMI shows is that not only is ice extent shrinking, but ice volume is also shrinking, which means there's net melt of sea ice. And, of course, that's consistent with global warming. Fernandez, left field! Next claim from Booker, the Greenland ice cap last winter increased in volume faster than at any time for years. Of course, the Greenland ice cap always grows in winter because that's when it's cold, and it melts in summer when it's warm. Here's the graph from the DMI, reproduced by Homewood, that shows it. So the question is, is it growing faster? In other words, is the amount of snow being added every winter increasing? Well, that's an easy one. Yes, it is. One of the predictions attached to global warming is that warmer air holds more moisture, and more moisture in the air means more precipitation in areas where rain and snow falls, like the highlands and interior of Greenland. So every winter, more and more ice is added. At this point, that's all the bloggers and the Daily Telegraph will tell you. But as the man who inspired me in my radio career, Paul Harvey, used to say, Now, the rest of the story. The rest of the story is what happens in summer, when there's net ice loss. According to predictions, global warming will cause accelerated ice loss in summer, just as it causes accelerated ice accumulation in winter. And that prediction matches observations. This study, published in Nature Climate Change, shows ice accumulation in red and ice loss in blue. Both are increasing every year, but as you can see from the graph, Greenland's ice loss is increasing faster than ice accumulation. Now, it's possible Homewood didn't read the Nature Climate Change study, but he says he did read the DMI statement, and that also says ice loss is greater than ice gain. I know a lot of people won't believe me, so read it for yourselves. The DMI statement says, Over the year, it snows more than it melts, but carving of icebergs also adds to the total mass budget of the ice sheet. Satellite observations over the last decade show that the ice sheet is not in balance. The carving loss is greater than the gain from surface mass balance, and Greenland is losing mass at about 200 billion tonnes a year. And it even repeats that further down. Satellites have observed a loss of around 200 billion tonnes a year. So it's not as if this wasn't spelled out in the DMI report that Homewood's using as his source. Johnson gives it a Next claim, the satellites now show in recent months global temperatures have plummeted by more than 0.6 degrees. Yes, and there is the plummeting global temperature. It plummeted because there was a temperature spike in 2016 caused by El Nino. There are lots of these temperature spikes and temperature rises, and of course, they're followed by temperature falls because temperature doesn't go up in straight lines. The question is, do these ups and downs change the long-term temperature trend? No, of course they don't, as a look at any temperature trend shows. But Booker doesn't even accept the trend. He writes, This means the global temperature trend has now shown no further warming for 19 years. Yeah, I hear this a lot, and we've had claims of no temperature rise for 15 or 20 or 19 or 18 or 17 years. 
and yet all the temperature measurements show clearly that there has been warming. So in the space of three short paragraphs, that's six claims out of six battered out of the ballpark. And if you don't agree, well, the DMI report is right there. I've given a link to it in the video description, so you can read it for yourselves. The thing is, you don't need to be a genius to do this. I came bottom of my class, but even I can click on a link and compare the claim with the source. A lot of people tell me they've started doing that now, and it clears up a lot of confusion about what to believe on the internet. The only thing the bloggers got right is that for a lot of people, this accelerated melting of the Greenland ice sheet is their worst nightmare. It's what scientists were warning about as far back as the 1950s, and now it's happening for real. You can say you don't care, or you can say you're happy about it. That's up to you. But what you can't do is cherry-pick or change the conclusion of a scientific study that says it is happening in order to support your belief that it's not.